Good afternoon. Wow, that's loud, isn't it? Well, I want to welcome both new and returning members of the, uh, to the Committee on Veterans Affairs to the 118th Congress uh, and this organizational meeting. You know, I've enjoyed uh, meeting individually with most of you, and I look forward to meeting with the, uh, those that I have not met with yet. For those that don't know, my name is Mike Boss, and I, it is an honor to, to serve as the 15th chairman of this committee. I am an enlisted non-combat Marine Corps veteran, and, and, and I'm from Southern Illinois. This is my ninth year in Congress, and I've been honored to serve on the Veterans Affairs Committee since coming to Congress. I come from a military family and a long line of service. My son and grandson continue that tradition and serve now in the reserves and active duty in the Marine Corps. After leaving service, I went home and ran a family small business and volunteered as a firefighter and also was a union firefighter for a few years and served for many years in the Illinois State Legislature. Now, I welcome all of, the, the, all of you to the committee, and I want you to know that you have my commitment to maintain a bipartisan nature of our committee's work. I do not take lightly the responsibility of operating and running this committee. I refuse to let our, our veterans down while we're working here, which is why I'm excited to get us organized and onto our work for the veterans and their families this year. As such, this afternoon, we will be, uh, begin with the approval of the committee rules, then of the actions of our uh, respective, uh, the approval and, and the actions of our respected caucuses, uh, approval of the vice chair, subcommittee chairs, committee ratios, and the approval of the committee staff. And first, I would like to introduce our new GOP members, if I can. Um, the members, if you would, just raise your hand and wave. We're not going to go in and let everybody have time to talk. So uh, somebody coming back to our committee uh, who has gone for two years uh, is, is Dr. Greg Murphy of North Carolina. Dr. Murphy represents Camp Lejeune, Cherry Point, Air Stations, uh, New River, and was, has been, uh, he's exci we're excited to have him back. Uh, Representative Scott Franklin of Florida. Scott is 26-year-old. 26-year Navy veteran and will be a strong voice for Florida's veterans population. Uh, Representative Van, uh, Van Orden uh, of Wisconsin. Derek is a former Navy SEAL and is a veteran, small business owner, and he has also used the VA care himself, and we're lucky to have him and his representation. Uh, Representative Morgan Luttrell of Texas. Morgan is also a Navy SEAL and a disabled veteran. After leaving the military, Morgan has spent much of his civilian career helping veterans recover from post-traumatic stress syndrome and also TBIs. Uh, Representative Juan, I'm gonna get it right, Juan, so we can, Siskamani, right? Siskamani of Arizona. Juan has spent years working with local community-based organizations, and I know he is ready to serve this veterans com community and our committee as well. Uh, Representative Eli Crane of Arizona. Eli is also a Navy SEAL, and after the military, uh, started a veteran-owned small business. He knows what it means to serve both his country and his community, and we're excited to have him here. Uh, Representative Keith Self of Texas. Mr. Self is a West Point grad, served all over the world during his 25 years in the Army. Uh, Texans are lucky to have him in, here in Congress, and he'll be fighting for them every day, I'm sure. And last, and certainly not least, is Rep Representative Jen Kiggins uh, of Virginia. Jen is a Navy veteran, military spouse, used the GI Bill to become a uh, geriatric nurse practitioner, and her kids are following her lead. So we're grateful to have her on the committee as well. Now each of these men and women bring a unique perspective to the table, and I will have no trouble, that, I, I will have no doubt that they will serve those who have sent them here and serve those who we serve, and that's the people who have worn the uniform. 
And finally, I would like to congratulate my good friend Mark Takano on his election to ranking member of the committee. Mark and I have served together for many years and, uh, on this dais, and I know that he shares my commitment to the rolling up of our sleeves and getting things done in the bipartisan way for our veterans. I look forward to working closely with him and, and the new and returning Democrat members on behalf of all of the veterans this year. And I now recognize the ranking member, Takano, for his opening comments. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations on your election as chairman of this esteemed committee. I look forward to working together uh, for the good of our nation's veterans. Uh, I know that uh, we are both eager to see our committee, actual committee room, uh, available to us, but what a great place for our first meeting. Um, I'll note that it's the new Speaker Nancy Pelosi caucus room, uh, and I'll note that uh, regardless of uh, what you may know about her, what, what many people don't know about Speaker Pelosi, um, is her tremendous regard for our nation's veterans. You may not agree with her politics, but Speaker Pelosi has always put veterans at the top of the priority. Um, the PAC Act is just one example, but stretching back to her previous speakership, uh, tremendous benefits, tremendous uh, support and resources have been directed to our veteran community. Uh, so it's appropriate that we are actually blessing this committee's first, very, very first meeting by meeting and honoring uh, the room that was so named. Our Democratic Caucus met on February 1st, 2023 and organized. And I'm pleased that we could welcome five returning members and five new members to the committee. I'll start first with our new members uh, by uh, giving you some background on them. Uh, Representative Chris Deluzio of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Representative Deluzio is an, is an Iraq War veteran, a voting rights attorney, and a union organizer. He graduated from the United States Naval Academy and was commissioned as an active duty surface warfare officer in the U.S. Navy. His military service included three deployments, including a tour of duty as a U.S. Army Civil Affairs officer in Iraq, Representative Deluzio has also been elected by his Democratic colleagues to serve as vice ranking member, a role that he will serve well. Representative Morgan McGarvey of Kentucky previously served a decade in the Kentucky State Senate, including four years as a Democratic leader. In that role, he promoted the needs of Kentucky's working families and focused on issues of public education, organized labor, and reproductive rights. During his tenure in the Kentucky State Senate, Representative McGarvey wrote and passed 18 bills into law. Representative Delia Ramirez of Illinois is a daughter of working class Guatemalan immigrants. Representative Ramirez is an accomplished legislator, social services director, and community leader. As a state representative, Representative Ramirez was instrumental in successfully passing legislation expanding Medicaid coverage to senior citizens regardless of immigration status. She secured, she secured over $450 million to build affordable housing, protected abortion rights, and created an elected school board in the city of Chicago. She also co-founded the Illinois House Progressive Caucus and served as assistant Democratic leader. Representative Nikki Budzinski also hails from Illinois. The contingent of Illinoisans on the committee is, a, is very strong in this caucus, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Representative Budzinski is a lifelong champion for working families, and she fought to get firefighters, firefighters, firefighters. sir, uh, grocery workers, and meat packers better training, wages, and workplace safety protections. She also led Ill negotiations to raise Illinois' minimum wage to $15 an hour and chaired the Broadband Advisory Board to expand internet access to rural communities. And as a former Biden-Harris administration official, Representative Budzinski helped to implement the American Rescue Plan, and establish the Made in America office. Representative Greg Landsman joins us from the state of Ohio. Before coming to Congress, Representative Landsman served on the Cincinnati City Council for five years, where he led investments in public safety and core services. And before that, Representative Landsman was a public school teacher and worked in education and advocacy as the executive director of the Strive Partnership. In 2018, he built a coalition of Democrats, Republicans, and labor unions, business leaders, and community members to pass the largest investment in the transportation and infrastructure, uh, in transportation and infrastructure in Hamilton County's history. 
I'm also pleased to welcome our five returning Democratic members, Representatives Brownlee, Levin, Pappas, Mervan, Sherfulis McCormick, and Sherfulis McCormick. I'm very proud of the accomplishments of the last Congress, and I look forward to our continued service together. We still have unfinished work to do as we strive to honor our nation's veterans. This committee has always served as an example of how we can come together to accomplish great things so that we can fulfill our promise to the men and women who serve our country. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, and I yield back. Thank you, Ranking Member. Uh, the agenda for our business meeting and all other documents can be seen on the iPad that's right in front of you there. Our first order of business will be consideration of the resolution to adopt the proposed committee rules for the 118th Congress. The proposed changes to the rules have already been sent to the members on both sides of the aisle and are before you now. Mr. Takano's staff and mine have worked uh, collaboratively uh, on the rules. And under the pro proposed rules, the committee will have five subcommittees, the Subcommittee on Disability Assistance and Memorial Affairs, Subcommittee on Economic Opportunity, Subcommittee on Health, the Subcommittee on Oversight and Investigation, and the Subcommittee on Technology Modernization. Most uh, proposed changes to the rules are minor, technical, and clarifying in the nature uh, when compared to the uh, committee rules for the 117th Congress. In terms of the more substantive changes compared to the last Congress, the rules were modified to for remote witnesses and clarified the purpose and rules for the committee's task force. Uh, are there any amendments to the proposed rules? Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report. Amendment offered by Mark. The text was, was circulated in advance and I ask unanimous consent that the reading of the is be dispensed with. Hearing no objections, so ordered. The rank the ranking member is now recognized for five minutes to support his amendment. Mr. Chairman, I, I just want to give you an opportunity to just uh, have staff explain the, uh, the absence of these monitors. My, my understanding is they weren't charged up or something. Is that right? Okay. That, so when in my script, I was said it was in front of you and the monitors. They were actually paper. Except for just down here. They just sit for down. Yeah. Except for down here. They're not because you're many of the iPads were not charged because, you know, our computers make our lives easier, so. <laughs> Thank you. No, I, we weren't, it wasn't, I wasn't trying to. It, no, it's fine. it's fine. Some of our members arrived late and they just didn't see the. It, and I didn't realize they weren't there. So. Yeah. Great. So, well, with that, you. you're you recognized to um, present my amendment. Present your amendment. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this committee has spent the last four years prioritizing efforts to open up Washington, D.C. to veterans and stakeholders from every community in the United States. Congress is often seen as an elitist institution, one catering to those who can afford expensive lobbyists. But for all the negatives of the pandemic, this committee was forced to modernize. We held the first virtual bipartisan proceeding in the history of Congress. We allowed witnesses to participate from their workplaces, homes, and the areas where they deliver services for veterans. In fact, we had over 400 witnesses participate remotely between April 2020 and December 2022. We opened Washington to veterans and others and in the process elevated voices from traditionally underserved communities. These voices brought to light vital issues impacting veterans while also showcasing the strength and diversity of the veteran population. There is no reason to roll back progress and throw out what is serving Americans, veterans, and our constituents. My amendment prioritizes the participation of witnesses who, due to financial limitations, medical conditions, work schedules, or disability, may not otherwise have had or have a voice in Congress. Despite promises from the new majority to make this Congress more open, the unprecedented power grab over how committees conduct business does just the opposite. Severely restricting the participation of remote witnesses would shut out the veterans this committee is tasked to serve and would make those with limited financial resources or in remote parts of the country travel thousands of miles for a few hours worth of testimony. Now, during the summer of 2020, Chief William Smith of the Valdez Tribe of Alaska and the Vice Chairman, uh, Vice Chairman of the Indian National, uh, National Indian Health Board testified from Alaska about challenges veterans 
have experienced accessing care from VA and the Indian Health Service. It is unlikely Chief Smith would have had the resources or time to travel from Alaska, but through the use of technology, we gained insights through his testimony. Just last spring, we heard testimony from Claire Manning Dick, the National Vice President of Gold Star Wives of America, who testified before the House and Senate from the Duck Valley Indian Reservation. Gold Star Wives of America is a nonprofit that receives no federal dollars, and through the use of technology, we're able to include Ms. Manning Dick in our hearing. We also heard from Paul Barabani, Baraboni from the Holyoke uh, Soldiers Home Coalition, an all-volunteer grassroots organization advocating for improved oversight of state veterans' homes. This organization would not have been able to fund his travel to attend our hearing, but technology made it possible. Using technology, we brought together the first ever congressionally convened meeting of black veterans groups. Eventually, this group would go on to found the Black Veterans Empowerment Council, which has continued to advocate on behalf of black veterans' population to this day. I hope few people in this room would agree, would argue, would argue against the value these witnesses brought to our work. But with the rules before us today, it is extremely unlikely we would hear from voices like theirs again. This flexibility was not a tool utilized uh, only by the Democratic majority. My Republican colleagues, too, used this benefit. Together, we heard from a paralyzed veteran from Montana about the digital divide and rural technology challenges. This veteran would have needed to take a train, then fly to Washington, D.C., all while using a wheelchair to participate in a roundtable. We need more individuals, just like this veteran, to testify before this committee. We need to make this place more accessible to veterans like this, not less. These veterans, advocates, providers, and organizations should be granted the flexibility to appear virtually in order to focus their efforts on what matters most, serving our veterans. Now, my amendment doesn't force approval of these witnesses, but it does ensure each witness's value is affirmatively considered by the chairman. It brings a little transparency and accountability to an unnecessary limitation that acts as a disservice to the veterans we serve. Voting yes on this amendment may be the difference between one of your constituents' voices being heard or ignored in the next debate. So I urge your support on this reasonable and common sense approach. And I yield. Thank you, Member. I now recognize myself for five minutes. Unfortunately, I must oppose the amendment. It appears that, and let me tell you, I appreciate the spirit in which it is offered, and I believe it take, but I believe it takes away my ability to comply with House rules and regulations with regard to remote witnesses. Under regulations set forth by the Rules Committee, it is up to the chair to request a waiver to allow remote witnesses. This waiver must be approved by the majority leader and only be granted for non-governmental witnesses to participate remotely due to the extreme hardship or exceptional circumstances. I intend to follow those procedures, and I would really hope that the ranking member would trust my judgment on when his request would be met and, and with this standard. The majority of my uh, commitment, the, the majority has my commitment that, I'm sorry, the minority has my commitment that I will review each request for remote witnesses and with great care and understanding of the circumstances laid out in the amendment. For this reason, I do not, do not believe the amendment is necessary as I don't believe that my judgment should be replaced by others. Uh, I am sure that the ranking member would have felt the same way uh, if, if I was to question his judgment in such a similar fashion when he was chairman. So I urge the members to reject the amendment uh, is there any others discussion from anyone? Seeing none? Okay, the question occurs now on the amendment uh, to the rules. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no? No. no. And put in the chair, the no, no's have it. Um, the clerk, okay. Is there any other discussion on the proposed rules? If not, I recognize Ms. Radawagon for a motion to approve the resolution and adopt the proposed rules for the 118th Congress. I move to approve the resolution that adopts the committee rules. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The next 
item on business is considered uh, is a consideration of a resolution to designate the committee vice chair and the subcommittee chairs under the resolution. Ms. Radawagon and will serve as the vice chair of the full committee. Mr. Luttrell will serve as chairman of the subcommittee on disability assistance and memorial affairs. Mr. Van Orden will serve as the chairman of, of the subcommittee on economic opportunity. Dr. Miller Meeks will serve as the chairwoman for the subcommittee on health. Uh, Ms. Ke Keggins will serve as the chairwoman of the subcommittee on oversight and investigation. And Mr. Rosendale will serve as the ch chairman on the subcommittee on technology modernization. I thank these highly capable members who have agreed to take on the demanding leadership responsibilities of chairing a subcommittee. I greatly appreciate their willingness to do so, and I look forward uh, to working with them. I would also like to thank Ms. Rag Radawagon for agreeing to serve as vice chair of the committee. I now recognize Mr. Berkman for a motion to adopt the resolution uh, des designating the vice chair and the subcommittee chairs. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the resolution that adopts and designates the vice chair and subcommittee chairs. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The, the next resolution before the committee is the des designate for ran ranking members, minority members of the subcommittee. I recognize Mr. Takano to offer the, his resolution. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I offer a resolution to approve the subcommittee ranking members. I, I, I now recognize Mr. Deluzio. I want to say this correctly. Say it for me one time. Deluzio, Mr. Chairman. Deluzio, okay. For a motion to adopt the resolution designated the ranking members, minority members, right? Ranking minority members. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that the committee adopt the resolution offered by Ranking Member Takano, designating the Democratic Ranking Members of the Standing Subcommittees. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Pending the chair, the ayes have it. Our next resolution is for considering designate, uh, designatees for the majority members of the subcommittee. The list is before the members, some in paper and some on your laptops there. I now recognize Ms. Radawagon for a motion to adopt the resolution designating the majority members of the subcommittees. Mr. Chairman, I move to... I move to uh, adopt, the adopt the resolution. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. In opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The next resolution is consideration by Mr. Takano designating the minority members of the subcommittees. Um, and Mr. Takano is recognized at this time. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I offer a resolution to approve the Democratic subcommittee membership for the 118th Congress. I recognize Mr. Deluzio uh, for a motion uh, to approve the resolution designating the minority members of the subcommittee. Mr. Chairman, I move the committee adopt the resolution designating the assignment of Democratic members to the standing subcommittees and the subcommittee ratios. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. In the, committee, in the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. We will now consider the resolution approving committee staff. The list is before the members. The committee has a high quality, experienced, and knowledgeable staff, many of whom are veterans themselves. And truly, uh, if you look around the, the Capital, we do have a wonderful staff with, that is highly qualified. Mr. Takano and I have, con, uh, have confidence that our staff will be very responsive to our committee and non-committee members alike and their staff and their staffers to serve them and their, helping their staffers and them to serve their veterans constituents. Mr. Takano is, real, is recognized for a motion to adopt a resolution of approving the committee staff. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that the committee adopt the resolution approving committee staff. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Opinion chair, the ayes have it. Now that should conclude our business for today's meeting. Um, and I, I thank all the members, their attendance, and I would like to recognize the ranking member for any closing comments he might have. Mr. Chairman, I, I, I just uh, would uh, ask that I be able to uh, 
announce who the ranking members are. That would be great, uh, yes. You. Um, uh, I would like to uh, introduce, uh, well, it was not introduced, but to uh, welcome back Representative Julia Brownlee, uh, who has been selected to serve as the ranking member, Democratic member of the Subcommittee on Health. She previously served uh, as the chairwoman of the Subcommittee on Health and the Women Veterans Task Force. She brings a deep knowledge of these issues to the role, and I'm pleased she will continue to lead the Committee Democrats on Veteran Health Care. Representative Chris Pappas has been elected to serve as the ranking Democratic member on the Subcommittee on Disability, and Assist Disability Assistance and Memorial Affairs. Uh, he has done a diligent, uh, dil diligent oversight work while on the committee, and I'm glad to have uh, him bringing back that experience to the subcommittee, charged with overseeing the implementation of the PACT Act. Representative Mike Levin has been elected to serve as the ranking Democratic member of the Subcommittee on Economic Opportunity. Uh, Mr. Levin has done remarkable work on the Economic Opportunity Subcommittee over the last two Congresses, and I look forward to his continued excellence in this space. Uh, Representative Frank Mervan has been elected to serve as the ranking Democratic member on the Subcommittee on Oversight and Investigations. Representative Mervan served the committee well last Congress and led on some important key oversight bills that will be critical to our ongoing oversight of VA programs this Congress. And Representative Sheila Sherpless McCormick has uh, been elected to serve as the ranking Democratic member of the Subcommittee on Technology and, Moderniz and Modernization. Representative Sherpless McCormick has strong experience in healthcare operations and will be beneficial to the subcommittee's oversight of VA modernization programs, including the Electronic Health Record Modernization Pro uh, uh, Project uh, Mr. Chairman, I am very proud of all our members who will animate our committees. Uh, and we look forward to working with the majority uh, in doing uh, what uh, is owed to our nation's heroes. Thank you. And thank you, and I, I look forward to working with, the, with you and each one of the members. I thank all the members for attending here today and look forward to working with all of you uh, in our shared mission to serve those who have worn the nation's uniform. And I ask unanimous consent that all members shall have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks on today's organizational meeting. Hearing no objections, so ordered. This concludes the business for today. We're adjourned. <laughs>